Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make crazy sense out of this crazy Arizona real estate market. I am not a Harvard graduate economist, and I won't pretend to be one, but I'm going to share numbers with you on what's going on here in Arizona and help you make your own decisions. Um, I am fortunate that I've got a great viewing audience. I mean, some of the comments that I get are really on point. And what I like about the comments that I get from uh, a lot of you out there is it, it makes me challenge some of my theories and thinking, and it makes me take a second look of some of the numbers. And one of the numbers that I want to look at, thanks to a comment that I got this morning, is what is normal? You know, we say that normal listings for Arizona is 27,400. Is it? I mean, it's not that that number for listings is a normal amount that we all strive for. And once we hit that number, we go, well, there we go. We're now in a normal market. Um, you know, inventory, month supply is going to be between four and six months. Prices are going to balance out. Everything's all rainbows and unicorns at that point. Well, there's a much larger population now than there was when we established what was considered normal or average. And how did that number come out? Because it's really not how many listings that we have that determines normal. It's the difference between supply and demand. That's what determines pricing. As you can see by this chart here, if we just go back to November, this is our demand index. This is proprietary math from Cromford. And it's up and supply is down. Well, then that puts pricing, upward pricing pressure on homes. You go to the opposite here and you can see that inventory is way up and demand is way down. And when there's that big of a gap, you have a crash. So it's not that we hit this magic number of 27,000, everything just goes, ah, here we go, it's great. Chasing a number that's normal may not be the way to look at this market. What we need to concentrate on is when these numbers meet and cross. When they meet, that's balance. There's no advantage for the seller, there's no advantage for the buyer. When they cross, and they've crossed a few times, then you get pricing pressure on the downside. And there's every likelihood that we are seeing now that that's going to happen. Now, in this industry, um, I'm always very cynical of things that I get uh, as a real estate agent. and uh, But I've always kind of been that way, even in my past career. I always question everything. It's like, yeah, you say that, but. Um, and I like change. So I'm, I'm kind of liking these numbers and these changes now because it makes us really do a deep dive. What I don't like is don't, don't send me stuff to try and pump me up. In other words, I'll get things from certain title agencies like, hey, here's what's really going on, blah, 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 you know, and they, they want real estate agents to, to just still be in the game and pumped up. I don't need to be pumped up. The numbers are the numbers. So I'm going to manage the transaction, whether or not you want to buy or want to sell. I'm going to keep you out of court. I'm going to make sure the transaction goes through. Um, I don't really care about being pumped up and motivated. I just want to go out there and do my job, which is not to be a forecaster, but to say, okay, well, here's the forms you're going to need. Here's the uh, the date we're going to need it by. Here's some key deadlines that we have to follow. Here's how the inspection process works. Uh, let's get with lending, blah, 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 right? So, but you get all these insider things just going boom, boom, boom. Well, now we got all these real estate agents that got their license in 2020. They've never seen a balanced market and they've never seen a market that goes down. They know nothing about a house that's been on the market more than a week and I'm not trashing them. There's some smart brand new agents out there, but you only have to spend 15 minutes in a Facebook group with real estate agents to make you go, oh, did, did he just ask that question? <laughs> so it's entertaining, if anything. But that's one of the reasons that I track on my own the seven-day moving average. And it's clear as day that the main number to watch is the gap between the number of listings that are coming on board and the number of homes that are going under contract. Does it match exactly the MLS? Yes. I pull it off every day. I pull the numbers off every morning. And you can see here this little dip. That's the 4th of July holiday. But you can see that the number of listings are growing. Now, on my video yesterday, I did point out that, that we are not seeing a run for the hills uh, panic uh, from homeowners that they have to sell. That's not what's driving that number. Not yet. Now, could that day come? Hard to tell. I'm watching. And it'll show up quickly there if it happens. So it's what we're seeing is we're seeing that there's more new construction showing up in that listing number. And we're seeing a lot of investors that have held like four or five investment properties, maybe listing one or two of them. And we're seeing 
a growing number of Airbnbs come on because there's nothing like high fuel prices and difficulty in flying around to hurt the tourism industry. And if you're an Airbnb uh, homeowner, you're probably not an expert in tourism. And here's what's happening to our days of inventory. And it's not really what the number is that strikes me, but how fast it went up. So we're sitting here at days of supply of 53 days of inventory. Now, look at this. You got this number here that says running average, normal. Well, in order to get a running average, you've got a, you know, a spike down, up, up, down, up, that, that, and that determines an average, and it means nothing. To tell you that our running average is 66.7 days means absolutely nothing because I want to see how far that gap is that I see here between supply and demand. As that grows and we see it in other charts, then you're going to see prices come down. Looking at this active listings right now and seeing the way that spiked up right now also means nothing all by itself. So we have to look at how many sales are happening behind that number. And that's very critical because we can have 16,000 homes on the market right now. And if we've got, uh, like we've saw in months past, 4,000 homes come on the market and 4,000 go under contract, that 16,000 means not, nothing the way it stands alone. It just means it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay level. But what we're seeing is we're seeing about 42 to 4,500 homes come on the market now and only 2,800 of them go under contract. So the gap keeps growing. I went back and looked at some of the comments in the Cromford Market Index that, uh, that I follow, and uh, they were talking in April, and they made comments like, here's some numbers we're seeing. This will not happen quickly, and it will not move in this direction unless, well, the word unless happened. So, you know, they're, they're looking at the numbers and saying, well, you know, normal times, this will mean that over time, prices will start leveling out unless... And sure enough, we got an unless. Here's the Crawford Market Index right here. This is the total market. That There could not be a straighter line down. That's just can't argue with the numbers because supply has got a straight line up. Now, they say that 100 is considered normal. That's a balanced market. And in the demand, this is where we're getting hammered. We dropped below 100, but we've dropped below 100 before back in 2014, back in 2019. And in July, June of 2020, because those numbers are from March, you know, stay at home, flatten the curve. So everything's pointing in the direction that says you're going to have some pricing pressures. So be careful when you're trying to chase normal until we really know what normal is. So we're going to track normal here and we're going to track today's numbers and see what's changing and what's changing fast and what isn't. And that'll help you make the pricing decisions if you're trying to sell a home and trying to purchase a home because homes are still selling. They're not selling as fast. So the wheels have not fallen off the wagon. If you price correctly and you offer some good terms, you're going to get an offer that you'll like. But if you're trying to shoot for the moon and you're wasting that real estate agent's time, hey, hey, come list my home, come pay for the photography, pay to have a sign put up, put the lockbox on, go back, spend several hours, put it on the MLS because I just kind of want to see if I can get this price. Don't do that to your agent. And agents, be careful because there's a lot of that going on right now. They just put it on, they leave it on for a week. I just wanted to see if I could get that price. That's not playing fair, folks. <laughs> hey, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, rick at rickhelps.com. And by all means, I really appreciate your comments. Thank you.